if you have previously watched one of my videos, you may have noticed that I've used Markdown in different ways. How to convert a work document to a Markdown, how to create a presentation with Markdown. I've compared different static site generator and told you which one is the best if you want to create a documentation website using Markdown. I also showed you how to create a presentation with Markdown. But I think at this point, it's time to talk about Markdown and to explain what it is, why to use it, how does it work and how you can get started, where and when you should use it and when you should actually look for alternatives. And finally, I will conclude telling you about the flavors of Markdown. So one important resource is this Markdown website. It's called Markdown Guide and contains a lot of useful material about Markdown. And also, if you are using Visual Studio Code, I will also suggest to have a look at their website and how to edit Markdown in Visual Studio Code. I usually use PyCharm, but I've seen that a lot of people prefer Visual Studio Code. So in this tutorial and in this video, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So let's get started. So here I have a Markdown file inside my computer, which I'm just opening with Visual Studio Code. The great thing is that on the left, I have the Markdown file, which has a MD extension, as you can see here from my file name. And on the right side, Visual Studio Code is previewing the file for me. So as you can see in Markdown, it's a little bit different from a conventional text editor such as Word. It's not what you see, is what you get. In Markdown, we have to write the basic language underneath, and then the editor, in this case Visual Studio Code, is going to convert the Markdown in something that is nice and beautiful to see. And also, since we have this Markdown code, then we can convert it to different formats. As you can see here, I have something that looks like a website on the right side, but this doesn't stop us to convert this Markdown file to a Word document or to a PDF. So then we can export this to a PDF and share it with other people. Here, if you want to add a heading, we have to use a hash key followed by a space. If you have one hash, then it's going to have a heading one. If you put two, we're going to have a heading two. And as you can see, this is a subheading, so it is smaller than the first heading. Text is written as in a normal document. The only difference is that if you don't put an empty line between two lines of text, then the text will not be in the new line. So let me just remove, and as you can see, I've pressed enter, so return key, but then on the right side, all the text is in the same line. But if I press return and I leave an empty space, this is the way of a markdown of going to a new line. This is actually very good because having each line on a new line is a good approach that we also use in LaTeX, which is another programming language to create scientific publication, because it's going to make us much easier to track the changes in documents if you're using Git or GitHub. Then here I'm showing an example how to create a list and how to create a net nested list. So if you want to have a nested list, you just have to write two spaces in front of the dash. You can have a, an ordered list just by using a dash or an asterisk. So this is the same, it's the same command. So if I go back here and I say new list, item, this is going to create a new item as the previous one. Then if you want to have an order list, we can put the number followed by a period. And in Markdown, actually another positive thing is that it's not actually looking at the number itself. It's just if you have a one followed by a period, it's going to create an order list, which is great because we don't have to tediously just change all the numbers. We can have one, 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 but then Markdown will understand automatically that this is an ordered list and is going to update it and put the right numbers here on the right. We can have separators, so it's just three dashes, and this is going to draw an horizontal line. And then we have quoted text, and this is just with a symbol of bigger than. So if you want to have code, you just have to put one single back tick if you want to have it in line, as you can see here on my screen, and you can have three back ticks if you want to have a block of code. Then we can have superscript and subscript. Here, in this case, we just need to take something from the HTML language, because if we want to have subscript, we just have to use the tag sup, S-U-P, followed by a closing tag, tag S-U-P, and this is going to have superscript, and the subscript is the opposite, so we're just going to have S-U-B, not S-U-P, and this is going to have subscript. We can also have LaTeX equation, and again, we can have them in line, or on a new line. 
So here, as you can see, the LaTeX is on a new line in the center of our document because we put two dollar signs. But if you put one, you will see that this changes and all the text is in line with the symbol LaTeX. The same is for the equation here. So if I remove the first dollar sign and the second one, the equation is going to be in line. But when we put two dollar signs, then we're going to have a block equation. We can also have uh, some typography, so we can have bold text with two asterisks, or we can have italic text with one asterisk. And uh, very importantly, of course, we can also add links and images and tables. Okay, so links are pretty simple to write because you just have to have uh, open square braces. You have to write what you want to appear in your final document, and then inside, within normal parentheses, you just put the URL link. If now I click here on this link, I will be redirected to OpenAI. If you instead want to add an image, it's very similar to links, but you have to put an exclamation mark in front. Finally, I want to show you how to add a table. Tables are probably the most complicated thing, but there is a workaround. So there are a lot of websites in which you can copy and paste a table, for instance, from Excel, and have it converted into Markdown. Python has also a feature. So if you have a pandas data frame, and you can say to Markdown, and then this is going to convert it to Markdown in a nice and way formatted way, so you can add it to your document. So now that we have seen the key commands of Markdown, and there is actually not much more to it, of course, if you're going to use a more complex flavor of Markdown, which we're going to talk briefly at the end, basically, you can have other commands, but these are the whole commands that you get. So as you can see, you have some limitation. It's not as powerful as Word, let's say. In Word, you can have uh, much more things, uh, but then at the same time, to write a simple document, to take uh, notes for a report, or to take notes, uh, or to write a uh, documentation website, this is all that you need. So you don't need much more than this in 90% of your document. And a positive thing of Markdown is that it's very easy to read. So everyone, even without any coding experience, can read Markdown, because it's basically just a normal File, file containing Markdown formatted text can open on any machine and can be easily synced with Git without having conflicting issues. Or if someone open a file with a one computer or another, everyone can open Markdown files. You just have to have an application that is able to just open a text file and you have to have an application like in this case Visual Studio Code or any other tool that is available for free to render this document. Some of the applications allow you also to directly export or create a PDF for you. Consequently, Markdown is platform independent. Okay, so you can just create a file on one computer and bring it to any other computer. It's also future proof. There is not going to be an update. If you use the basic Markdown language, that's it. It's going to work this file even in 50 years, which is something that not always is the case if you have written a Word document right now. Who knows if you can open it in 50 years, but a Markdown file, you can always open it. So let's see what Markdown is good for. So we have already touched on a key aspect, but I want to just go over it again. So Markdown is great to create website. And a few tools that I really suggest you if you want to create a website with Markdown are Jekyll, and then we have Docusaurus, and then we have Retype. So these are great tools that have videos on, not about Jekyll, but the other two, Docusaurus and Retype are a great tool that you can use to create a simple website. If you want to also have a tool that allows you to have a web interface to create a documentation website with Markdown, just have a look at Gitbook. It is a great tool. It has a free tier. You have to pay for some features, while the other two are free in Markdown. It is also great to create documents, as I previously mentioned. It's great to take notes, write books, and presentation. So if you're writing presentation, there are different uh, tools uh, one of my favorite is Slide Dev, and I have a video on Slide Dev, but there is also Remark, Marp, uh, and Clever. These are just a few. You can also use Markdown in emails. So there is Markdown here that allows you to write an email using Markdown, and then you do right click, and the email will be converted in a nice and formatted way. And it's fully customizable, so you can also select how your email will render when you convert it from Markdown to Final Text. Finally, as I mentioned, there are different flavors of Markdown. So the language that I show you at the moment is the basic one. It, you can uh, basically, this works across all the platforms that support Markdown, but then eventually every platform, such as if I look at Retype, it has added a few Markdown flavors or features 
that allows you to add buttons to your website, to add backlinks and so forth. However, one of the things that you need to consider or keep in mind is that not all flavors of Markdown are supported on all the platform. So for instance, R, if you are R programmer, you can write your um, document, even your final paper with R Markdown, but then they have like is a flavor of Markdown. So this is not compatible with all the other systems. So if you're trying to co uh, copy and paste a R Markdown file into another application, most of the thing can be converted, but not everything. Anyway, if I think, I strongly believe that if you're writing a scientific paper, I would suggest you to use LaTeX. And I have more than 50 videos on how to get started with LaTeX and how to use LaTeX. And I think is honestly the best way of just writing a paper. So should you give it a go? Definitely. I think you should uh, get started with Markdown. I'm sure you have been already exposed to Markdown. And as you can see here on my screen, it is super simple to get started. So definitely just check it out, have a look at it. For next time you want to take some notes, write a simple document or a simple report. And honestly, just have a look at my videos in which I explain how to create a simple uh, website with Markdown because you will be honestly shocked how simple it is to create a website using Markdown. It is super simple to get started, it's super simple to collaborate with other people, but you get great results. Thank you very much for listening. Please check my channel if you want to find out more and if you think this video was interesting. If you also made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, so it's a great favor that you can do for me. If you also feel very generous, you can also support my channel by buying me a coffee, or you can support me on Patreon if you prefer to support me over there. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.